What's going on, Wolfpack? My name is Denaric Wolf, and welcome to some more Bosnian Reacts 2 Geography Now Malaysia, this time, or Small Asia, as I liked to call it, because it's, you know, a small part of Asia. Makes sense, right? Or maybe it's the Mall of Asia, because all Asians go there to, to get their shopping done. <laughs> I don't know. I'm done with puns for today. Paul, do you have any terrible puns for us? Well, here we go. Ever since I made the Indonesia episode, you have no idea how many Malaysians were like, Okay, now that you did our cousins episode, do not mess with ours. Oh, don't worry, Malaysia. And here to reassure you, I made you some nasi goreng. <laughs> I'm assuming they don't, they didn't enjoy that. <laughs> Hey everybody, I'm your host Barbs. How refreshing! We are back in Southeast Asia, and today, after Brunei, East Timor, Indonesia, we are doing the last country in the Nusantara Archipelago, Malaysia. Ahem. Oh, sorry, didn't see Singapore. You Singapore. You're so small. So what do the Malay? And for some reason, the Malaysians kicked Singapore out. Singapore didn't declare its independence, but Sing just got kicked out of Malaysia. And of course, Singapore became one of the wealthiest places in the world, and Malaysia was like. God damn it. <laughs> but, um, I don't know why. I still don't know why. That's all I, I heard from another Malaysian guy. Just told me they were just kicked out of, of Malaysia. Why do they think that super strategic island, um, shouldn't be a part of their country? Why? It was because there's a lot of Chinese there. Well, there's a lot of Chinese in uh, Malaysia as well, but especially in Singapore. Was, was that the only reason? Asians bring to the table I mean, that the others don't. I well, let's find out in the first segment. Q transition. <laughs> now this is going to be really fun because Malaysia's land has so many unique twists and turns. And explaining it, it's you know, it's kind of like doing a Rubik's cube blindfolded, right, Ken? Six hundred right. IQ, yeah. Ken. Yeah. Uh, you got it? I don't know. Did I? You got it. <laughs> cool. Uh, can I have my lunch break now? Oh, Ken, you know I don't speak Tagalog. Back to the coal mines. <laughs> First of all, Malaysia is located in Southeast Asia. Does he have a Philippi two main Filipino parts, peninsular Malaysia, where about 40% of the land, Manual which also worker. has the southernmost tip of mainland Asia, Tanjung Piai, while East Malaysia, or Malaysian Borneo, takes up about 60% of the country's land on the island of Borneo, making it one of the only two islands shared by three nations along with Cyprus. If you want to be technical, Cyprus kind of has four in including the UN buffer zone, but you get the point. Just watch the Cyprus episode. Keep in mind, about 80% of the population lives on the peninsula, while only about 20% live on Malaysian Borneo. In addition, the country has over 870 islands off its shores, the state of Sabah having the most with nearly 400. I the see largest three. one being <laughs> Bangi Island. However, the island of Sebatik is a little bigger, but the island is split in half with Indonesia in the south. Also, they have a little bit of a dispute with the reasons. Philippines in the east. The country is divided I know into that there's one woman like uh, that lives right in between the uh, Indonesian and Malaysian uh, line and actually the Indonesia and Malaysia cuts right through her uh, house <laughs> so she has a, bar a part of Malaysia part of Indonesia in her in her own house hey uh, I guess that that means she can move around she has double citizenship so you can move around Malaysia and in uh, Indonesia at the same time I don't know <laughs> to 13 states and three federal territories, Putrajaya Labuan, with the capital Kuala Lumpur. However, due to overcrowding, almost all the government ministries and administrative offices were moved to Putrajaya in 1999. After Kuala Lumpur, the next largest cities are Georgetown on Penang Island and Ipoh. The busiest airports are Kuala Lumpur International, Kota Kinabalu, and Penang Internationals. Now here's the thing, Malaysia lies under the South China Sea. If you don't know anything about this place, and if you didn't... I do know some a lot about that place, but um, uh, ju just an FYI, 20% of the world's shipping just goes right through here, right what I'm showing you here, the Straits of Malacca. Bloop. That's it, 20% of the world's trade. If you didn't know, it, uh, it's like half of the world's economy comes from like trading, 80% of trading happens on the sea, so a couple of trillion dollars just pass through here every every year, and it was a kind of a hot spot, hot spot for pirates back in the days. But um, anyway, yeah, and, and Singapore lies just right there. Over here is the South China Sea, where which of course China is kind of just like, yeah, I'm just gonna take that. Yeah, that's not, yeah, that, that looks good. <laughs> yeah, China wants all of that. As a matter of fact, a, a lot of people want a chunk of that. But Paul will explain more. Watch the Brunei episode. It basically goes like this. <laughs> exactly. Basically, every country in this area. Except China is a lot taller and dangerous. <laughs> Today, Malaysia has claim to about eleven of them, and the most notable one being Layang Layang, which they built an airbase on. Now, you might notice that it's interesting how these two small entities, Singapore and Brunei, got mixed up into this whole region. Well, when it came to Brunei, it kind of went down like this. Welcome to the Malaysia. 
agreement. Sultans, please sign the paper saying you'd like to be part of Malaysia. Wait, I'd have to give up that? And and I'd have to lose control of what? Oh, hell no. As for Singapore, Surprise, it was more like... Hey, Malaysia, you just got free from British rule. Let's join up. Makes sense? Yeah, we are now one country. You have too many Chinese people, and you're gonna oh. waste my money. Yeah, well, you only get privileges for the Malay. Uh, you know what? You're out of the club. Yeah, fine. You know. Oh, it was because I of Chinese. Quit. One day, you know what? I'm gonna make something of myself. Okay. And boy, howdy, did they keep that promise. Otherwise, some notable places of interest might include places like the largest roundabout in the world, the Petronas Towers, the tallest twin buildings in the world, Kuala Lumpur Tower, the Batu Caves with a Hindu shrine, the National Monument of Malaysia, Legoland Malaysia, yeah, they have one, <laughs> Sunway Lagoon, the National Mosque of Malaysia, Kek Lokzi Buddhist Temple, these awesome. palaces, the old Dutch buildings of Malacca, the Leaning Tower of Taluk Intan, Afamosa Fortress, the Cat Statue of Kuching, this Heritage Museum, you know cultural I mean. villages and the Sepilak Orangutan Rehabilitation Center. Yep, Orangutans, they have plenty of those in here, which means we can now swing over to the next segment. Like Dustin uh, checks in. Anybody watch that film? <laughs> When it comes to Malaysia's land, they got kind of lucky because not only is it like rich and beautiful, but unlike their neighbors, you don't really have to deal with any crazy catastrophes. First of all, Malaysia rests comfortably on the bottom of the Eurasian plate, literally shielded on all sides, mostly Thanks, by Indonesia. Indonesia and the Philippines. This means that if any earthquakes occur, Indonesia usually absorbs all of it. If cyclones and, the and tropical storms attack, the Philippines and Indonesia take the hit. And if a volcano erupts, they don't have to worry because they don't really have any volcanoes and it's probably happening in Indonesia. Thanks, Indonesia. Now, when it comes to nature, even though the largest lake, the Kenya Reservoir, lies on the west peninsula of Malaysia side, the eastern Malaysia Borneo side has all the extremes. They have the highest mountain, Mount Kinabalu, the longest river, the Rajang, and a this lot more animals. In fact, Malaysia is one of the most biodiverse I got my eyes countries in the world. They have 14,500 species of flowering plants and trees, over 600 bird species, over 200 species of mammals. Speaking of What's which, weird sun Malaysia bear is home to the most black panthers in the world. Insert Wakanda joke, I don't have time. Speaking of that, the national animal is yes. the Malaysian tiger which is also featured on the Wakanda Arms, and Asia covered in Flag Friday stay tuned otherwise they have elephants rhinos orangutans and they even have their own version of tapirs like the ones in what is South that? America wow and that creepy looking what is that thing I think I saw this before but I still said it's like an aardvark just did it with a pig <laughs> what the hell is going on out there are oh, you hear the cars uh, honking their horns that actually means that somebody just recently got married. Because in Bosnia, when you hear, when there's a bunch of people like honking their horns, I, either there's traffic, of course, and people are having road rage, but it, it also could mean, which is most likely right now, that somebody got married. So congratulations to that person and, and from all the wolf pack. Good on him. The ones in South Andrew. America, wow. And Not that creepy her. looking proboscis monkey. Many of these species you can find in one of the oldest rainforests in the world, over three times older than the Amazon, Taman Nagara. Malaysia is also a land of caves. In fact, they have the largest chamber in the world that can be found in Sarawak. Otherwise, mean, Malaysia is known for producing electronics. I do know that Vietnam has the largest cave in the world. It's so huge, it has its like own weather system. That's how big it is. Palm oil, petroleum, gas, and rubber. They're actually the second largest palm oil producer in the world and the largest condom maker, just saying. They even have their own national car company, Proton, making Malaysia the 11th country in the world. Is it fast as a Proton? Design and engineer and manufacture cars. Otherwise, some national dishes might include things like Nasi Kandar, Nasi Dadang, Nasi Kerabu, Chicken Perchi, <laughs> Mango Nasi Durian are treasured foods. Oh God, that... and the national dish, nuts, and the national dish, Nasi Lemak. Oh, and if you have the chance, see if you can witness the famous Tariq tea shows. The I pour out tea it's sometimes like, over a meter in yeah. length it's almost seen as like an art form okay i think that's just about it for now in this segment uh let's talk about the coolest part of malaysia the malaysians just for the record, the word Malay refers to the races that make up Malaysia. Malayan is the geographic term for peoples of West Malaysia on the peninsula and not part of Borneo. And Malaysian is the nationality and citizenship. I'll so probably a Malay forget person all in Singapore is Malay, but not Malaysian. And a citizen of Indian descent living in Kuala Lumpur would be a Malaysian and Malayan, but not Malay. Got it? Probably not. First of all, the country no. <laughs> has about 32 million people and is one of the fastest growing nations in Asia. The country is made up of 67% Malay. So literally its land is like expanding, it's growing that fast, damn. 
Malaysia is going to take over the world and it's going to become super powerful. Or Bumiputra indigenous Malay I know peoples. what it means. We'll talk more about that in a bit. Okay. About a quarter of the population is Chinese, about 7% are Indians, and the rest are other so groups many mixed Chinese. in, including a few other Asian groups and Europeans. Watch out. They use the Malaysian ringgit as their currency, they use the type G and M plug outlets, and they drive on the left side of the road. Now, here's the thing. Let's talk politics. Oh. Oh. No, we're not getting into an Actually, ideological yeah, yeah, debate. We're just going to explain the system in which Malaysia's government operates. Proceed. Malaysia is one of the monarchies <laughs> in the world. However, it's not a monarchy in the conventional sense because they kind of have nine kings ish. These nine yeah, states yeah, each they have say, a royal they leader power or a sultan, something. and every five years they rotate to allow one of the nine sultans to rule as head king, known as the Yangti Pertuang Agong. That means that technically, if you were a boy and king. your dad just finished being king for his five year term, you could be the next one, but you would have to wait at least 40 years for it to happen. You know, since eight other kings would have to be king before you. Yeah, I know. It's like, oh, what the? There's a lot more that goes into it, but that's kind of like the basic underline. They are the only country that does this. I mean, the closest thing would be maybe the Comoros with that rotating president thing but it's nowhere near as complex as this yeah. nonetheless the royals are held under a constitution that limits their power mostly to cultural and religious affairs as well as appointing certain leaders and so on most of the government activity is held and controlled by the prime minister and the parliament which brings us to the most recent controversy the 2018 election this effectively changed everything as for the first time since 1957 the bn party was voted out and the new pkr party took over and it was actually a peaceful transition we really don't have a lot of time to talk about it but it's really interesting to look into and talk to a malaysian person person if you want to know more about it. It was like a huge deal for the country. Anyway, the country has two official recognized languages, Malay and English. They were once a British territory, so it kind of makes sense. It's taught from elementary school. Malay is basically intelligible to Indonesian. Both countries can generally understand each other. I explained this a bit in the Indonesia episode. For Malay, the words are easy to read, but the problem is the intonation. For example, the word for slowly, I believe is perlahan, not perlahan. It's like you just have to know how these things work. Nonetheless, about half of the population is mostly fluent in three languages, adding their mother tongue, especially if they're part of the Chinese and Indian minority groups. And they are allowed to take vernacular schools that teach in these languages, just like Singapore. Which brings to culture. In Malaysia, the population is quite diverse. You have a lot of Chinese, known as the Peranakan Chinese, that have existed how did they get since there? the 15th century. Oh, they have a unique Chinese Malay culture with a touch of European influence. The Indian community is mostly Tamil and Telugu-speaking South Dravidian Indian groups that were brought over during the British colonial years. Then, of course, you have the largest people group, the ethnic Malays, or the there's Bumiputra, some Bosnians as well as the as well. Orang Asal, who are in like Malaysia. the really indigenous ethnic Malays that make up the majority of the population in Egypt. Especially like right after the war, a lot of them like went over to Malaysia to actually study, and they ended up uh, living there. And also, a lot of Malaysians come come over to Bosnia, you know, as tourists. But um, just 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 an FYI, what FYI for everybody out there co coming to visit uh, Bosnia, hopefully. Uh, Try try to see other parts of the country and not just Sarajevo and Mostar because whenever tourists come here, especially like the Malaysians, they're only just like around Sarajevo. There's other parts of Bosnia you can check out. Just <laughs> I'm just saying, I'm not a tourist guy, nor do I want to tell you what to do, but check out other parts of Bosnia. Bosnia. It's a fairly decent sized state. It's pretty small, but <laughs> but there's other things to see in Bosnia, not just two cities. East Malaysia on Borneo. Sometimes these two people groups are collectively joined together under the term Malay, although some might disagree. But either way, these two groups kind of steer the direction in terms of what constitutes Malay culture. Oh, and don't even get started on the Bajau people that live on these structures in the middle of the ocean for most of their You're lives. Crazy. They've adapted to hold their breath for like 15 minutes underwater. Yeah, those people are cool. Another I can hold it really for 15 seconds. Is that sometimes Indonesians do kind of accuse Malaysians of stealing their culture because a lot of Malaysians are descended from Sumatra. Faith-wise, Malaysia is also quite diverse. Although the country's official religion is Islam, it's a multi-confessional nation. Buddhists are mostly from the Chinese community, Hindus for the Indians, Christians from all races. Numerous temples, mosques, and shrines and churches are found all over. Malay culture is defined by a number of aspects. For one, the clothing. Remember a couple months ago that guy from Malaysia, Kamarul, sent me the Malay hat, the Tengolok? So I forgot to bring this on set when we were <laughs> filming, but I still have the hat and I, I love it. I'll put it, that in I the thumbnail. I told you I wear it in the head. episode. So here I am. I'm wearing it in the Malaysia episode. Thank you so much, man. I asked some of you guys, the Malaysian geography peeps, what you would like me to highlight in terms of Malay culture. And some things you said included things like the performing arts, such as Joget dancing and Makyong theater, traditional shadow puppetry, Silat martial arts, Songket weaving, the traditional steep roof and sharp buttress architecture, Gamelan music. Speaking of which, 
History time. We don't have enough time to go too far into it, but in the quickest way I can put it, Hindu kingdoms, Buddhist kingdoms, Islamic sultanate, Portuguese came in, Dutch came in, British came in and made the White Raja period, which made things interesting. World War II, Japanese came in, British came in again, independence. Okay, very quickly, just to cut, this is God the part where I totally forgot to mention all the cool stuff that happened in the 60s. It's how they got those two states in Borneo. We'll explain more on Flag Slash Fan Friday, so stay tuned. Economic restructuring and industry boom, 2018 vote for the new prime minister, and here we are today. All right, some notable people that you guys, the Malaysian geography people, suggested that I should mention in this video might include people like Siti Nuraliza, Lat, the cartoonist, Sheikh Muzaffar Shukor, P. Ramli, Ziavi, Hang Tua, Enrique of Malacca, Michelle Yo, Tony Fernandez, Air Asia owner, designer Jimmy Chu, Melinda Louie, singer Yuna, director James Wan, Dr. Mahathir Mohamed, Nicole Ann David, Lee Chong Wei, Henry Golding, and the first prime minister, Tunku Abdul Rahman. I'm sure there's way more famous people I could have mentioned, but we gotta move on. Time to go to the last part of this episode, the... I'm I guess uh, Indonesia. Now Malaysia is quite the powerhouse player when it comes to Southeast Asia. They got a good thing going on and they host great parties. Outside of Asia, the EU has good relations, making Malaysia one of the top three trading partners of Southeast Asia. And specifically, Austria loves exchanging electronics and pharmaceuticals with them. Of course, the UK is still pretty close as a former colony. Much of the cultural UK's residue is everywhere. still evident to this day. They are one of the Commonwealth of Nations. Many Malaysians live in the UK and most of the white population in Malaysia are of British descent. As a member of the Association of Southeast Asian Nations. Of course, they have close ties to their neighbors. Cambodians love Malaysia and visit often, whereas Malaysia is one of the closest and biggest investors of Cambodia. Thailand has a few issues since there are those Malay Patani separatists in the South that keep protesting, whereas the Philippines is like, hmm, we're really similar ethnically, but you're mostly Muslim and I'm mostly Catholic, but whatever. Who we cares? both like coffee and fried chicken. When it comes to their best friends, however, most Malaysians I've talked to Don't have said in Indonesia get in and way. Singapore. Singapore may have left the Malaysian Union, but they still kept close ties as a sovereign state. They are quite cooperative in business and even culturally, they are very similar with noticeable Chinese and Indian minority enclaves. Indonesia is like the big brother that has a very different political system, but in the end, they cannot deny how alike they are. The biggest difference would be that most Indonesians have a Javanese background, whereas the Malaysians are just Malay, mostly Sumatran, but they talk the same, they eat the same, they enjoy the same hot, humid atmosphere, and they have close relations altogether. In conclusion, with sultans, kings, tigers, panthers, also, temples, shrines, also, why did you try to, um, uh, you try to copyright the American flag here? <laughs> they just took off the stars and just put a, a Muslim, sim some Muslim symbolism on it. And really cool hats. More, more on that. Malaysia is becoming right a after spot this. That everyone's talking about today. Stay tuned. The Maldives is coming up next. Oh, man. Maldives. Man, they're going to be underwater in a couple of years, I bet. <laughs> Unfortunately for them. Hey everybody, welcome back to Flag Slash Fan or Friday, fighting you like the Malaysia water. episode. Now as you know, yeah, this is the good. part where I usually kind of talk about and discuss the things that didn't quite make it into the video. One of the things I really wanted to talk about, but we just didn't have time, was the 1963 Malaysia Agreement. In the simplest way I can put it, Indonesia was against the states of Sarawak and Sabah becoming a part of Malaysia. So for about three years, they had a little bit of a war slash skirmish against each other. And in the end, Malaysia held their ground and they held on to Sarawak and Sabah. And that's why today, Borneo looks like this split up between three nations. So crazy. Really? It's like one island, but like everybody wants a piece of it. And I don't blame them. That island is pretty cool. They have like flying snakes and nope. all these weird Goodbye. animals on it. There's probably a lot of other Burn things the like said, but we, there's just a time. Yeah, let's, let's jump into it. The flag. So without further ado... <laughs> Ah, Malaysia. I remember that time I crossed the bridge from Singapore into Johor. I actually had nasi malak for the first time from a street vendor. I didn't even know what half this stuff was. I just dumped, like, everything on my plate. I Shove mean, it in your honest, mouth. Uh, like, like in Skyrim. Didn't digest very well, but I liked it anyway. <laughs> Worth it. Anyway, the flag. Let's jump in. The flag also is a nice striped here. <laughs> banner with 14 alternating red and, and white stripes, much like that of the USA, with a blue canton in the upper left, bearing a yellow crescent and 14 pointed star. The stripes and points on the star both represent the unity between the 13 states and the 14th one representing the federal territories. The crescent kind of funny because the United States has religion, Islam, 13. While the blue represents the unity of the Malaysian people, and the yellow represents unity, the color of the Islam. royal rulers of <laughs> Malaysia. Especially. Fun side note, the 14th stripe and the 14th point on the star used to stand for Singapore, but then after they left, they made it stand for the federal territories. Because, you know, uh, Singapore, yeah, it's just it uh, wasn't working out. In addition, before the Sarawak and Sabah thing happened, they used an 11-pointed star after independence. And prior to that, of course, they were under the British. Each state had their own crown colony flag. Prior to that, 
that, they were under the British Straits settlement, whereas the Borneo side was under the Kingdom of Sarawak. Interesting. Anyway, the coat of arms. The coat of arms contains a shield with lots of symbols on it. On top of it are the five krises, or the traditional daggers representing the former Malay states of Johor, Teranganu, Kelantan, Keda, and Perlis. Totally butchered those pronunciations, I'm sorry. Under it, on the left, there's the Pindang Palm with the Penang Bridge representing Penang, whereas the colors in the middle stand for the Federated States. The three sections at the bottom represent the two states of Sarawak and Sabah with the national flower, the hibiscus. And on the right side, the Malacca tree representing Malacca. On the sides, the shield is supported by tigers, the national animal symbolizing Not strength lines, and courage. This time. The crest on top of everything is a yellow crescent and star, just like the ones on the flag with the same meanings. And finally, the motto at the bottom banner reading, Persekutu Pertamba Mutu, which means in unity Arabic? is strength. Keep in mind, of course, over the years, the coat of arms has changed quite a few times. Things got a little tricky when Singapore joined, but then left. Sarawak had to change their flag because it was like too similar to the one of the Czech Republic, Czechia. But overall, the format of the tigers and the shield has stuck. And that is just about it. Uh, you know what time it is. It's time for Geography. And it's the end of the episode, as usual. So thank you all for watching, and as always, take care.